Winter riding takes an added toll on your bike, which can end up costing you a fortune in repairs or lead you to have a mechanical, causing you to be stranded at the roadside in the cold and wet. Now, you don't want either of those things, but fear not. We've put together a maintenance checklist to keep your winter riding hassle-free and save you money. First thing we're going to look at is tyres, and that's because in winter they take more of a battering than they do in the rest of the time of year because, well, there's just more crap and detritus on the road which can cause you punctures. So it's better to routinely check them a bit more often than you do between your rides in summer. Simply just inspect the tread, and what you're looking for is to check for the wear indicators and see where the wear is at, but also for little cuts and flints and bits of glass that might have got stuck in there, which could cause you a puncture on your next ride. Getting a puncture in winter when it's cold and wet is far, far worse and more annoying than getting one in summer. So it's really worth doing. The other thing is, is you may notice that these tires on my bike at the moment are TT tires. I don't normally run these in winter. I just have them on because of a video I was filming yesterday that's my story and I'm sticking to it. But if you're running a tubeless tire, these ones aren't tubeless, another good thing is to check the level of your sealant. So the best method to do that is the dipstick method, whereby you put the valve at the six o'clock position, you deflate the tire and then you remove the valve core. Then just stick a long thin object, a spoke can be used for this if you've got a spare one lying around, in down the valve core into the sealant. When you pull it out, if there's liquid sealant on the end of it, you're good to go. You can keep on trucking. But if it's all dried up, nothing will stick to it. And then you need to know you need to add a bit more sealant and top it up. It's also worth paying a bit more attention to your tire pressure as well, because grip is uh, arguably more important in winter when the roads are a bit slippier, either through colder temperatures and potential ice, but also, again, just dirt and rubbish on the roads. Um, there are various calculators out there. The Silker one is excellent, and they generally suggest running slightly lower pressures in winter, um, and that's something that I do too. Next on our list, lube. One of my favorite topics. Now, on the channel, we often advocate waxing your chain because it is the, the, the optimum sort of lubricant you can use on your drivetrain. However, in some winter conditions, it might not be the optimal thing, especially if you live in a wet climate and you're riding frequently. Now, the reason I say this is because, well, firstly, we'll get a bit scientific. Wax is an amorphous solid, which means it's not crystalline. And so as a result, if we get really nerdy, it can become a bit more brittle and hard in very cold temperatures. So perhaps if you live in Canada or Siberia, your wax might not be performing as well as it might do around 10 degrees Celsius and above. So consequently, you might want to use an oil-based lubricant. That said, oil-based lubricants are not all equal. So there's independent testing data out there that shows that there are two or three oil-based lubricants, such as Silca Synergetic, which perform far better than the others. And the way in which they perform far better is they don't attract as much dirt, which means that they don't turn into that black grinding paste, which wears your components super quick. So that's the kind of lube I'd suggest. And if you're riding in conditions where you're riding frequently in wet, dirty roads, where you're attracting a lot of dirt and you're having to clean your bike on a regular basis, reapplying wax can become quite impractical, even with the drip on wax, because you have to apply it the day before you intend to ride so that the water-based carrier can evaporate. Whereas a drip on oil-based, good quality wet lube, you can apply just before you ride. And so it's far easier to do, especially if you're doing it frequently. And while on the subject of the chain, it's worth keeping an eye on wear because the last thing you want is to be 100 kilometers from home in the freezing rain and your chain snaps. It's less than ideal. A chain checker tool is an inexpensive gadget that's well worth having. There's more than uh, one different type out there, so these are two examples. So on this chain checker, it says between 0.25 and 0.5 is okay, but when you get to 0.75, that's when your chain is worn and you need to replace it. If you allow your chain to wear beyond that, you get to the point where actually 
you're too far gone and you need to replace your cassettes and maybe even chain rings as well because they will have worn with the worn chain and that'll end up costing you more money, considerably more. But if you don't have a chain checker tool, then a household object you can use is a good old 12 inch ruler. And that's because chains use imperial uh, pitch. So they're half inch pitch uh, between the links on the chain. So if you line up one of the central pins on one of the rollers with the end of the 12 inches, like so, then if you then go to the end of the ruler and look where the 12 inch mark falls relative to the nearest pin. If it's out by a 16th of an inch, then your chain is worn and needs replacing. If it's out by an eighth of an inch, you're too far gone and you probably need to do your cassette as well. In winter, your braking surfaces take more of a battering as well and will wear faster. Now we've covered rim brakes in the past and it's pretty straightforward. You just make sure you keep them as clean as you can and wipe them down and free from dirt. And it's easy to inspect your rims um, and your brake pads visually. With your disc brakes that more people are, are running these days, the pads are easy to inspect visually because you can simply just pop them out if you can't see them and you can have a good look at how much compound is left on the pad. And once that compound is running really thin, you know it's time to replace them. Your disc rotors are a different story. Now, to measure if your disc rotors are worn out and have got too thin, what you're going to want to do is use some verniers. And so, for example, on the Shimano rotors I've got here, it actually says on the side, replace when they get to point, well, 1.5 millimeters in thickness. Now, unless you've got like X-ray laser vision, yeah, you're going to struggle to see that with the naked eye. But what you're going to do is put verniers on there and measure it. Verniers are quite expensive and not everyone has them, but fear not, your local bike shop will. Um, so this is something that they will happily check for you for free. Uh, it takes a minute to do it and well, the reason why is because they'll probably want to sell you some brake rotors after they've checked it and told you that they're worn down. But yeah, really simple to do. But to maintain the life of your uh, rotors and your pads longer, again, it's the same thing with the rest of your bike, regular cleaning. And what you're going to want to use is a, is a dedicated you know, brake cleaner. This is a good one because it also doubles up as a drivetrain uh, cleaner. And so when you're spraying this on your cassette and chain, you don't have to worry about it contaminating your brakes because it actually cleans your, your rotors too. Uh, whereas some can have like uh, the compounds which then you get overspray onto your rotors and pads which invariably contaminates them because it's not designed to go on, on the braking surfaces. Some people use dedicated winter bikes but other people just use the same bike all year round. Either way, it makes sense to use less expensive consumable components during winter because you will wear through them quicker. And certain components will save you money, but don't really offer a huge amount more in performance. Although you may want to switch to say Jura Ace rotors when you, you know, are going for your big event where you're trying to be as fast or as good as you can be um, when the weather's nice. But things such as the chain, the cassette, the rotors, brake calipers, the great thing with a lot of group sets is the cross compatibility throughout throughout them. So for example, you know, if your bike has a top of the range Ultegra or Jura Ace group set on it, why not run a 105 cassette or a 105 chain or 105 rotors when you're riding in winter? Your bike will be a little bit heavier, but so what? I haven't yet talked about bearings in this video, but naturally you should be checking them too. And they do take more of a battering in winter like everything else. Now, what you're essentially looking for with your bearings is play in a direction where there shouldn't be, or if they start to feel a bit, well, if they sound a little bit noisy, or they start to just feel not smooth and a little bit gravelly. For example, you can often feel your front wheel by just, if you spin it, you can often hear it and you can just sort of feel how smooth it is. And that's something that comes with experience though. Now we have dedicated videos on how to replace bearings. So I'm not going to go into detail of that here, but what I will say to you is that cartridge bearings are brilliant because they're very easy to replace. Now, if you 
what, take out your bearing that you need to replace, it often has writing on it, and it should have writing on it, listing the dimensions of that bearing. And from that, you can then search for the exact bearings you need on specialist bearing retailers. There's some websites out there you can easily find using Google. Now, this is a really inexpensive way to get hold of really nice brand new bearings, which you can install in your bike and keep it nice and tickety-boo. Uh, but if your writing has rubbed off on your bearings because they're old or they're just worn, you can find out what the bearings dimensions are again by measuring it with verniers. Something that people might forget to check but is really important is the state of your saddlebag. And being where it is on above the back wheel, it often gets caked and covered in mud and water and all sorts of crap. And this can actually soak inside the saddlebag and then people often forget about it, but it can cause things in it to corrode because it creates a perfect environment for rusting. And so things such as your CO2 canisters can corrode away, your little CO2 inflator tool if you have one, your multi-tool, um, other bits and pieces, even your inner tube can get damaged, especially if it's rubbing slightly um, with that dirt in there against a hard object like a multi-tool, it can get a little hole in it and then it's useless when it, you come to use it at the time you, you need it most. So one thing to do is to just give your saddlebag a bit of love if it gets caked in loads of rubbish. You know, give it a bit of a clean, um, take it off, make sure you dry it out, take the bits out individually and dry them out if, after you've had a really wet ride. And another little hack you might want to consider is just getting a, a simple little clear plastic resealable bag such as this and either, you know, putting items in there such as you know, metallic things that might corrode, such as your multi-tool, or if you want to give a, an inner tube a bit of protection, you could put that in a, in a bag, a little thin plastic bag too. And finally, a bonus tip for you, you need to look after the engine, you, and keep yourself healthy. When you're riding around on winter lanes, somewhere like England, you find that your bike and uh, frame and your bottles get covered in cow pats. This isn't very hygienic and can cause you to get sick. So something that I've taken to doing, which I think is a bit of a game changer, is using caps on the end of the teat of your bottle just to keep it clean and free from cow pats. So you, just that keeps it clean, flips on. You can uh, buy various different ones. There's ones that cover the whole nozzle and then there's ones like this that just cover the, the teat and keep it clean. Um, and these are removable. You can take them off, but yeah, something that I'm, I always use in winter now. Well, there you have it. I hope you found these tips useful. I hope they save you some money and keep your winter riding less, well, less stressful. Um, winter riding is one of the best times to go ride your bike because the light is often incredible. It's quieter and you just see nature in a different way. But this list isn't exhaustive. So if you've got some other tips, I feel like these are the main ones, but fire yours down in the comments below and it'd be great to hear them. I'm uh, gonna go now. Love you, bye.